first performance in October. It was called Mary Coulant, and it was the story. It told the story of a woman's stroke. So that was the only reason why I knew, really, the, the signs of a stroke. Um, otherwise, I would have known I no idea uh, what it was. But I felt the numbness in my face, even though I could move it. Um, I was uh, utterly confused, my because since it happened in the left side of my brain, it, it's, everything didn't really make sort of like compartmentalized sense. Uh, forming words together was really, really, really difficult for me. Um, and so oftentimes I would just kind of sit and stare at just objects and sort of feel like I was in a movie in a way. Um, so logic was not there. <laughs> and at 2 a.m. I decided, wait, this my arm is this useless stump. There's no way I'm, I'm able to like move it. I think I'm having a stroke. I think I should go to the hospital. I think, um, but I don't want to worry my family, so I'm going to drive myself. And that was that was like the the worst thing that anybody could do. But I, the logic was not in my uh, uh, lexicon at the time. Um, so I actually drove myself to Memorial Hospital at two o'clock in the morning. Uh, walked in and said, "I think I'm having a stroke, but I'm not sure." Very, very wrong here. So they put me in triage care, uh, code stroke and I was wheeled off to getting my CAT scan and getting my x-ray and uh, all these people were all around me checking to make sure and I was in this mass confusion about what was really going on because it just never occurred to me that at 42 I would be getting a stroke, I would be having a stroke. It just never occurred to me and it happened that fast. Uh, there was no pain, there was no um, like, I didn't feel it. I actually just didn't feel anything except numbness. It was it was all numb. The evidence of the stroke, and it was uh, an uh, acute. See if I can remember this. It was an acute infarct in my upper left lateral thalamus, so it <laughs> deep inside the brain. And um, when I looked into it, it, it affects uh, the part of the brain, the nuclei that uh, that affects uh, locomotor uh, movement, gross muscular locomotor movement and uh, cognitive uh, processing. So I will get, I still get confused uh, very often. And words will sometimes, I, I feel like they're just right here. And they could just be simple, simple words such as coffee. And I'll say, you wanna get some, it's that thing. <laughs> And, and then somebody will say, oh, coffee. And I'm like, oh, that, that's it, that's it, that's it. I just couldn't quite say it at the time. So uh, my recovery so far has been great. I, I uh, had a lot of support. I've had a lot of support. I have a lot of friends on Facebook. So when I, I put the announcement out, you know, partially to let everybody know I'm alive, but this is what's happening. Um, of course, I called my family first. <laughs> I, did. I called my family first from the ER when I was told I was being admitted and that they suspected a stroke. Um, and then uh, husband and kids came by. My uh, mother was stuck in Alaska and she had, had to take a flight home. Um, and my father came and visited me in the hospital, uh, but I announced on Facebook and there was, I had received tons of support uh, from the people um, and amazing support from the people here that uh, the teachers and the parents all sort of kind of banded together and made sure that classes were still running, rehearsals were still running. Um, we had, uh, yeah, because we had, we had a performance that we were supposed to do, it was our, our summer showcase that was supposed to happen that Saturday. And uh, so instead of that Saturday, we, we needed to reschedule and, and to find out, okay, well, how are we gonna do this? Oh, come on, Han, you can do better than this. And so doctor says 12 months, give it 12 months. Um, it could be longer, but just it's not like anything I can control it. It's, but there is just that, uh, it's that, that, that disbelief. Uh, how could this happen to me? That's, that's, you know, answering that question because uh, being in that situation in the ER where I was, I was rushed from one station to the next to make sure that I, I, I was in emergency care, uh, never been through that before. 
And uh, there was the possibility we had to, you know, it was a possibility that there could have been some more damage. Um, and uh, yeah, stroke is a silent killer. It, it kills people. And I knew that already. And uh, so it's the, the hardest thing for me is to recognize that if I start feeling not right on this side of the body, or if I start to have uh, some anxiety that I don't conflate it into something that it isn't. That um, uh, that has been my hardest journey. That that's been the hardest part because um, it it is scary and it is um, as 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 hard as I work and as and as uh, positive as I can be. Um, it 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 can be when I think on it. It's scary. It's really really scary. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to. It's like I don't want to deny it, but I also don't want to live in that, if right. that makes sense, sure. you know.